climb it. You climb it. All right. Just drop. Drop it down. Ready? Yes, sir. Oh! That's good. Great. Fantastic workout today, guys. I'm going to finish it up. Go to Chipotle right now. I'm swinging on that rope. And when I left, the girl said, Bye, Tarzan. I couldn't help. I felt, I felt something in myself. I just felt like a king. You know, we all want to be Tarzan. Lettuce, substitute, no rice. I just had Chipotle, but Fast Eddie's is right there. I think so. I just had Chipotle, but Fast Eddie's is right there. I think so. I went in there, I said, hey girl, can I get a hamburger? I'm on summer shredding, give me it on a lettuce bun. She said, sure honey bun, come back to me when you're shredded. She took this onion. I want to talk a little about this new book I'm reading. It is called, Leaders Eat Last. Hello camera. Holy shit, man, this is like my portal to you guys. Say hello. I love when you guys comment. I love interacting with you. Uh, it just gives me ideas when you share your comments and stuff with me. I really appreciate that. So thank you for everything, guys. Continue to do that. Let's go onwards with the message. So today, I started reading this new book, Leaders Eat Less. And one of the things it starts off with is saying, when you first search Google, there you will get a man with like a rope or a chain pulling this huge boulder, all right? And then when you Google boss, you get an image of a man with a whip, whipping a bunch of people. Okay, the leader pulls the heavy load. He takes the grunt work. He goes above and beyond. And the people love him for that. The people follow him because he leads the way. He shows them the path and he makes them feel comfortable. He makes them feel like there's a purpose. He gives them something to follow. But the boss just, you know, it's so, it's easy to be a boss. It's easy to tell people what to do. I know people like that. Definitely know people like that. And shit doesn't get done. People don't enjoy going to work. People don't enjoy or feel like they're building a greater something. So, in this book, it was a story. I'm going to share that with you too. I'm going to do my best. This guy in Afghanistan, he's a, a fighter pilot. He's in this jet and he's flying over and his team of 22 men, I believe, enters this battlefield, which is a very narrow valley, okay? There, it, there's walls on each side and they go into this valley and he's flying so high, but it's a cloudy night. He's way too high up in the air that he can't see the guys on the ground, okay? He's supposed to be providing head overhead support. He can't see him. So he has to make a decision. It's getting pretty dangerous. This valley is low. He's getting run into the mountains. The troops could show up any second. He's flying, he's flying, he's flying. And then all of a sudden he hears some words that he's never heard before. We got contact. We got contact. Something like that. We got contact. Anyways, he's never heard this in battle. But he knows what it means. It's one of the worst things that you could possibly hear. He said when he heard it, his adrenaline immediately started to go off. His heart began to pound because his men were in danger. They had made contact with the enemy and now they were, they were receiving and giving fire back and forth. So he had a choice to make. He could leave or he could go below the clouds and try and find out where they were, risk running into a mountain, risk being shot down, risk giving away a position, whatever. But he needed to do it. Right, so he makes this decision, he goes below the clouds, he's flying, and he, he says, we need it, we, he, we need some help. He hears it, we need help. And the guys, he sees all the, the bullets whizzing in the night sky, whizzing in the air, just 
back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. His men are in trouble. It's up to him to provide it. But the mountains come closer and closer. So he does a couple test runs and he counts one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and then he pulls up. And then he comes back again for another one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four he pulls up. And he times it just right. He gives him a time. So he does, he goes back and he unloads on him. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, goes up, pulls him back into his seat. He goes again, his people on the ground, we got him, you got him, you got him, keep going, keep going. He goes back, his heart's racing, there's unloading, unloading on these guys, another direct hit, another direct hit, pulls up, pounding in his chest. Anyways, at the very end of the night, not one single person in this squad came back harmed. No one was dead, everyone was alive, everyone was saved. And it was because of this man that took the risk, that did what he needed to do, that provided the safety. And he didn't even know a lot of these guys. The troops on the ground never met him, right? He's just doing his job. And these guys came up to him and hugged him like they knew him for ages, like they knew him for a lifetime, like brothers, because he saved his life. Did what he needed to do, even though he was scared. He didn't get any fancy medals. He didn't get any rewards. Not always rewarded doing the hard work. We're taking the step up. And you know, as I'm hearing these stories, I'm, I'm thinking about my own life in the workplace and the people. I don't have to go into a battle zone and fly below the clouds and shoot at enemies. But you know what I do have to deal with is a lot of hate and a lot of bitterness and, and nasty attitudes. I feel like I'm under attack all the time. And I feel like, like there's a lot of negativity that needs to be combated. But, you know, what's really easy, and, and it's easy to happen, man, when you're hit with all this shit, other people's bad attitudes, other people putting you down, and, like, jiving you at work, you know, baiting you with the words they say, and, and trying to bring out something from you, you know what it happens? It's easy for anger to get a hold of you. And when anger gets a hold of you, it just, it's a grip that continues to tighten as long as you remain angry at the other person. As long as you are somehow emotionally connected, that anger just constricts you, man, like a python, and it will suck the life out of you. It'll kill you, man. Cortisol will kill you. Shakespeare said something like, love me or hate me. In the end, I win. Because you feel something, right? If you're indifferent towards something, you're not emotionally attached. You fall out of love and you become indifferent, you're not emotionally attached anymore. But anger, anger will make you feel like shit. And it'll, it'll make the work they suck. It'll suck the enjoyment out of life and what you have to do. So cut that where it is, man. Sever that. I know some of you guys are dealing with that. You've talked to me about that. People in the workplace, your environment is important. You are, in a sense, like the people that you hang around with. So. Make things right with them. Show them love. And the most part we're talking about here is, is leading them. And instead of holding on to anger and getting on their level, lead them to a better place. Show them. Lead by example. I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, like, actions speak louder than words. I can't even hear you. <laughs> because it doesn't matter about the talking. It matters about the, the, the actions that you bring, that you do, and other people see that. So, guys, show love. Be the light. We gotta lead, man. We gotta pull that, that we gotta go above and beyond and like be the force, be the light, be the ones to go the extra mile and like bring other people with us, okay? Let them see. Don't even let their anger or negativity weigh you down. Keep on stepping, brothers. I love you. See you soon.